Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. We're going to go ahead now and finish my uh, Team 1-6 boat. Uh, it's a Team 1-6 because I didn't have a creative name for it. It's 16 feet long and it's a team boat. So, what I got to do is go ahead and put the bow and stern sections on and the sides. You can see here all of the uh, ribs are in place, the bottom is set. This particular boat here, uh, in case you haven't watched the other videos, it's got a double bottom for the cockpit floor so that if somebody sits or steps on it, they're not likely to go through into the honeycomb section. But it only has a single bottom because that's all it ever needs. So what I'm going to do first is lay these sections out. I'm running out of room in here. But the bow and stern simply just uh, snap together essentially. I'm going to go ahead and use construction adhesive this time instead of wood glue to adhere it because I want to make sure that I uh, get all the gaps closed up. Construction adhesive is really uh, thick and gooey and that helps plug up gaps where wood glue really can't fill any gaps at all. So I'm going to run construction adhesive at all my key connection points and then uh, shove it together. So I'm going to just shoot a bunch of adhesive in here and it will obviously spread itself out once it gets in place. And you can see how much it sticks up. This bead's about a quarter of an inch in diameter, which is what you want for this, because we've got to make sure that this doesn't come off. So now you can see here we've got the glue everywhere we need. And now we're just going to butt these two pieces together. lined up. Here we go. And that's that. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing to the stern section. I'm pushing my construction adhesive into the seams with a piece of cardboard. I use a downward scraping motion to ensure the adhesive penetrates the corrugations as much as possible. You can see the inner completed seam and how nice it looks. I shoot adhesive in as far as possible with the caulking gun. Then I come back with a new piece of cardboard and press the adhesive into the seams and smooth it over. Again, using a downward scraping motion to really get it in there. First thing I'm going to do is tip this up on its edge and uh, put some essentially uh, chocks underneath it to keep it from tipping. Because I need gravity in my favor so that I can uh, get clamping pressure on this wall piece. If I set it like this, I'm going to have to come up with a bunch of ways to uh, apply sideways pressure over a 16 foot length, and I just don't have any way to do that. So I'm going to use gravity because I have that uh, in most places of the shop. Now the one thing I need to do before I continue is uh, trim the side down just a little bit. I left it still about an inch and a half too long, so I'm going to center this up and trim each end so that it matches the bow and stern wall sections. I got all my construction adhesive laid. Now I gotta get this down quickly because it's so hot out here, this stuff wants to set really, really quickly. It's okay to use masking tape to hold the cardboard while the glue dries. This is a low-tack painter's tape, and it works really, really well. Now it's all taped up, and I'll come back later once it's dry. The key here is that we take the tape off in the correct uh, way. And the way to do that is to never peel away from a corner or an edge. So we peel towards the edge. Oh, that one, like, ooh, I got lucky there. But since we're here, I don't want to peel back because it might adhere to this and peel this skin back like so. So then I grab the bottom, do the same, peel to its edge, and then peel back this way to avoid tearing off the skin of this piece right there. The joints are all dried up. Now it's time to go ahead and paint this thing. I've got about 5 eighths a gallon of Valspar left. That should be plenty to do this job. This was left over from last year, so this is going to default to red. I'm going to paint the bottom first. Now the reason for this, this paint is going to probably drip over the edge. And when it does, 
I want to make sure that the last coat of paint, which will be the sides and top, covers up the drips from the bottom. I'm going to start down there and work my way this direction, keeping all my strokes parallel to my grain. When I get to an edge, I use the same scraping motion like I did with the adhesive to help push the paint down into any gaps that might be there. I then paint the middle, making sure that my strokes are parallel to the grain. Well, the paint job is complete. I'm pretty much going to row in this position. It's going to look a lot like this. The water will come up uh, halfway or so when it's full of people. The only thing left to do now, uh, looks like there's a few touch-up spots right in here on the floor that I just missed, probably due to bad lighting. I'll touch those up with the red paint, but what I'm going to do is flip this thing over. We're going to varnish the bottom uh, for the same reason we did the bottom paint first. I'm going to varnish the bottom so that any drips will come along this side, and then I can finish over them. That way it just looks a little bit better. Well, it's time to finish this up. We're on the home stretch. Now I'm going to start to varnish it the same way that I did with the paint. I'm simply going to start at the back of the shed and work my way forward, doing the entire bottom and making sure that all the edges are uh, really sealed up. I've transferred some varnish here into this little, little bean can. So what I'm going to do for starters is making sure that all my edges are done really well. So I'm going to go around this portion and do that, and then of course finish up with all uh, parallel to my grain brush strokes up and down like this. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, flip this thing over and varnish the top and the inside. Well, I'm happy to report that it's all done. Finally, it's been, uh, it's been quite a process. I think it's been about a month or two maybe even now. Uh, it's just a bigger boat than I've ever built before. It's 16 feet, one inch long. Uh, it came out an inch longer than I had originally planned. I'm not sure how that happened. I measured at least three times and did a lot of cutting, but who knows. Anyway, the varnish is all cured. One coat's all I'm going to put on it. I don't see any reason to put two. Uh, it got a little bit heavier. I'm going to weigh it uh, once I bring my scale back home. So what I'm going to do now is uh, do just a little bit of touch-up work here on the inside. Other than that, uh, this looks pretty good. So I'm going to finish this up real quick, and then we'll uh, have to take it for a test run here in a day or so.